Let me suggest this morning that we attempt to put ourselves in David's shoes as we reflect on Psalm 52. And we have the opportunity to do so by way of the superscription, which tells us that this psalm was composed on the occasion of uh, the Edomite named Doeg going and telling Saul that David has gone to the house of Ahimelech. And to make sense of that, we go back to 1 Samuel 21 and 22 and trace through uh, a number of events. In this setting, David, though already anointed by God and by Samuel to be the king of Israel, is running from the then king Saul. And David, in his flight, seeks help from Ahimelech, one of the priests, and Ahimelech gives David and his men sustenance by way of food and also arms for the battle, particularly the sword of Goliath. But in this exchange in which David is seeking help and in which the priest Ahimelech gives help, there's a man watching, and his name is Doeg. And Doeg is a servant of Saul. And so Doeg goes back to Saul and you could say tattles on Ahimelech and says this Priest Ahimelech helped David, your enemy, the one whom you're seeking to put to death. Now, in light of this, Saul gets enraged and says to his men around him, put to death Ahimelech and his priests. And Saul's men refuse to do so. They refuse to lay their hands on the Lord's anointed. And so Saul says to this Doeg, then you kill them. And Doeg, attempting to... Uh, garner favor from the king, does so. He kills 85 priests of God and then goes and kills men, women, and children from the town in which those priests were ministering. One priest survives and escapes and goes to David and tells him what has happened. And this is David's response from 1 Samuel 22, 22. He said, I knew that Doeg would do this when I saw him watching us when Ahimelech gave us assistance. And then he says, I have caused the death of all the persons of your father's house. If you're David, and this is what's happened, how do you pray? How do you go before the Lord? with this on your conscience, that, as he says, I've caused the death of your household? Well, Psalm 52 helps to answer that question. And it can help us as well to process the hurtful schemes of wicked men. All of us probably in some way or another have been victimized by the hurtful schemes of wicked men. And Psalm 52 then can help us to process this. I want to look at three ways, very briefly, that David... Uh, responds to and processes the sin of Doeg. The first thing he does in verses 1 through 4 is he denounces the sin. He describes the sin and he denounces it. In light of God's continual goodness, Doeg was deceitful. His tongue had brought destruction. And he names that. He denounces the sin. He acknowledges it to be a violation of God's will and of God's justice and righteousness. The second thing he does in verses 8 through 9, sorry, in uh, verses 5 through 7, is he deprecates the sinner. David points out what will happen to the man who, as he says in verse 7, does not make God his strength. So he actually warns this wicked man saying, this is what will happen if you continue to behave wickedly and refuse to make God your strength. And what he says is, you'll be plucked like a weed and cast into the fire. So David doesn't just vent, you might say, before the Lord. He also confronts the sinner. But then finally in verses 8 and 9, David declares the gospel. He says not only to this Doeg, but also to those around him and to us as well, he says there is a better way. 
There is a better way than living according to a deceitful tongue and according to works of wickedness. He says, trust in God's mercy, verse 8. He says, unite with God's people, live for God's glory, and become rooted in His grace. So this is how David responds to this most troubling situation. We pray that God would give us grace as well when we're victimized by the schemes of wicked men to respond in a godly way, confronting the sin, but also taking refuge in the gospel of Christ and declaring that better way to those around us.